welcome to another video. This lesson is on dimensional analysis. In this video, we will be covering real-life applications, have SI unit conversions, and include a complex example. Dimensional analysis is an essential skill that students need for science and math. We use it when we have to convert between different units. There are three main steps to doing dimensional analysis. First, we need to know all the conversion factors necessary for the problem. Second, we set up the conversion factor so we cross-cancel the undesired units and result with the unit we want. Finally, we multiply their values at the top and divide the values at the bottom to reach our final result. In our first example, we want to find how many seconds are in one week. We know that one week consists of seven days. One day is equivalent to 24 hours. One hour is 60 minutes and one minute contains 60 seconds. In order to form our conversion factors, the top must have an equivalent value as the bottom. For example, one week has the same value as seven days. For this problem, since we want a resulting unit of seconds, we have to arrange the conversion factors in a way where we can cancel out week, days, hours, and minutes. Let's see how we can arrange our units. The first conversion factor is seven days over one week. This conversion factor is valid because the 7 days at the top is the same as the 1 week at the bottom. Notice how the unit week is written at the bottom. When we have the same unit at the top and at the bottom, the units can be cross-cancelled. So arranging our conversion factor in this way allow the unit week to be cross-cancelled. This arrangement of conversion factors will continue until we have our desired unit second at the top. Then we cross-cancel the units that appear both at the top and at the bottom, leaving us with the final unit seconds. Finally, we multiply all the numerical values at the top and divide all the numerical values at the bottom. Note that multiplying and dividing by 1 have no effect on the value. We can therefore ignore the 1's. 7 times 24 times 60 times 60 equals 604,800. With the unit, the final answer is 604,800 seconds. Let's try a more relevant example. One school class period is around 54 minutes. How many seconds are in 54 minutes? We know that one minute is equivalent to 60 seconds. By arranging the conversion factor like we did in the last example, we cancel out the unit minute and multiply 54 by 60, reaching a final answer of 3,240 seconds. Next, let's try an example that involves the prefixes to the right. How many kilometers is in one centimeter? When we are dealing with prefixes, we first convert the prefix unit into the base unit. The base unit in this problem is meter. We are given the unit centimeter, therefore our first step is to convert centimeter to meter. We know that 1 meter is equivalent to 100 centimeters. We want to cancel out the centimeter, so we put 100 centimeters at the bottom and 1 meter at the top. Now we have it in meters. We need to convert meters to kilometer. We know that 1 kilometer is 1,000 meters. Now we want to cancel out meters, so we put 1,000 meters at the bottom and 1 kilometer at the top. After cross-canceling, we end up with our desired unit, kilometer. Now we multiply the top and divide the bottom. 1 divided by 100 divided by 1,000 is 0 0.00001. Adding in our desired unit, we have the result of 0 0.00001 kilometers. The second way of doing this problem is to use the prefix table on the right. However, in order to solve the problem with the second way, you need to be familiar with multiplying and dividing positive and negative powers of 10. What we have right now is centimeter, which has the prefix centi. Referring to the table on the right, we know that 1 centi is 10 to the negative 2 times the base unit. Therefore, 1 centimeter is 10 to the negative 2 meters. Adhering to our cross-canceling rules, we put 1 centimeter at the bottom and 10 to the negative 2 meters at the top. Now that we have our base unit meter, we need a conversion factor to convert meter to kilometer. Kilometer has the prefix kilo. According to the table to the right, 1 kilo is 10 to the third times the base unit, which means 1 kilometer is equal to 10 to the third meters. Following our rules of arranging conversion factors, we put 10 to the third meters at the bottom and 1 kilometer at the top. After crossing out all the units, we are left with the unit kilometer, which is what we wanted. Multiplying all values at the top and dividing all the values at the bottom, which is 1 times 10 to the negative 2 divided by 10 cubed, gives us 0 0.00001 kilometers. 
so 1 centimeter is equivalent to 1 times 10 to the negative 4 kilometers. Let's try a more advanced question with units that are cubed. How many liters cubed is in 10 milliliters cubed? Referring to the chart to the right, 1 milli is 10 to the negative 3 times the base unit, which means 1 milliliter is equivalent to 10 to the negative 3 liters. Again, we arrange the 1 milliliter at the bottom and 10 to the negative 3 liters at the top so we can cross cancel the milliliter. Here's the catch of this problem. Notice how the unit we have is milliliter cubed. We therefore have to make our conversion factor milliliters cubed. To do so, we have to cube the whole conversion factor. Now we distribute the cube to all values and units. 10 to the negative 3 cubed is 10 to the negative 9. And the units cubed become the cubic units we want. Once we have the cubic units we want, we cross cancel out milliliters cubed, leaving us with the unit liters cubed. Multiplying the top and dividing the bottom, or 10 times 10 to the negative 9, will result in 0.0000001 liters cubed. Or instead, we could write it as 1 times 10 to the negative 7. Let's try doing this problem another way. First, we convert milliliters to the base unit liters. We know that 1000 milliliters makes up 1 liter. So we put 1000 milliliters at the bottom and 1 liter at the top. Because the given unit is milliliters cubed, we need to make sure the bottom of the conversion factor is also milliliters cubed. To do so, we have to cube the whole conversion factor. After distributing the cube, we cross cancel the milliliters cubed, leaving the desired unit liters cubed. 1 divided by 1000 cubed is 0.0000001. Adding the unit liters cubed, we have 0.0000001 liters cubed. The final question we will go over involves addition. It might seem hard, but it's very easy as long as we follow each step carefully. Now in the last example, we have 1 inch plus 2 centimeters plus 0.5 meters. We cannot add these values with different units, therefore we have to convert the three values into the same unit. Let's start off by converting inch to meters. A given conversion factor for this question includes 1 inch is equivalent to 0.0254 meters. We start off with 1 inch. We want to cancel out 1 inch so we put 1 inch at the bottom and 0.0254 meters at the top. After cancelling out inches, we are left with the desired unit meters. Multiplying the top and dividing the bottom, 1 times 0.0254 equals 0.0254 meters. All we have to do now is convert 2 centimeters to meters. The conversion factor from centimeter to meter is 1 centimeter equals 0.01 meters, or 10 to the negative 2 meters. We start off by writing what we have, which is 2 centimeters. We then multiply by the conversion factor, which is 10 to the negative 2 meters over 1 centimeter. We have the centimeter on the bottom since we want to cross cancel the centimeter. Once we remove the centimeter, all we're left with is the meter. Now we multiply the top and divide the bottom. 2 times 10 to the negative 2 is 0.02. Adding our unit, we reach the result of 0.02 meters. Now we add up our values in meter. We have 0.0254 meters plus 0.02 meters plus 0.5 meters to reach the result of 0.5454 meters. That's the end of this video. If you have trouble understanding any part of this lesson, type your questions in the comment section down below. Ha <laughs> ha